This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Semi variable costs. And we spoke about semi variable costs way back in one of the uh, early lectures, second or third one. Uh, and it's, uh, we're looking at costs which are part variable and part fixed. And our job is to split out uh, what is the variable cost per unit and what is the fixed cost per period. Uh, and there are two, we're going to look at two methods in this chapter. One we did look at before, which is the high-low method. So in a minute, I, I will revise that. Uh, and then another method, which is perhaps somewhat better. I'll explain why when we come to it. There's something called regression analysis. So, um, as usual, I will split this chapter into uh, two or three lectures. But first of all, let's revise the high-low method. Now, again, this should be revision, but look at example one and let's work through it. Uh, electricity costs for the first six months of the year are as follows. So we've got six months there, January through to June. And each month we've recorded how many units were produced and uh, what the total cost was. And you can see immediately that firstly it's not a fixed cost. The cost changes each time when there's uh, February had fewer units than January so the cost was lower. In March more units so the cost was higher. Uh, but you can also see almost immediately that um, the cost isn't truly variable. You see, if it was truly variable, the cost per unit each month uh, would stay the same. And it isn't. You see, if you look at January, 2260 for 340 units, 2260, 340, if it were truly variable, the cost would be 665 a unit. And it would be the same each month. But if you look in February, the cost is 2160, there are 300 units. That works out at 720 a unit. And so the point is, it, it's obviously not a fixed cost, uh, but equally, it's not a completely variable cost. It's a combination of the two. And our job is to calculate what's the variable cost per unit and what's the fixed cost per month. And with high low, uh, we take the highest and the lowest observations of what we call, excuse me, of what we call the <clears throat> independent variable. Now, what I mean by that is surely here the cost will depend on the number of units. Cost depends on units. So cost is the dependent variable. Uh, units is the independent variable. Well, we take the highest and lowest uh, of the observations of the independent variable, which here is the units. So what's the highest number of units? The highest number of units is in April. It's 420 units. And the total cost in April was 2,400. <coughs> uh, we then take the lowest of the independent variable. The lowest one is 300, which was in February, and the associated cost was 2160. So do be careful, it's the highest and lowest of this independent variable, which isn't necessarily the highest and the lowest of the dependent variable of the cost. And then we carry on exactly as we did um, in that earlier lecture. Uh, in that we say, uh, why is the uh, cost different for those two months? Any fixed cost will be the same. So the only reason the higher one is 
higher cost than the lower one is because of the extra variable cost of the extra units. We look at the difference. There were 120 more units and the cost was higher by the difference of 240. Well, that 240 has to be the extra variable cost of those extra units. And so we can say straight away, the variable cost 240 for 120 units is $2 per unit. So, we've got the variable cost per unit. What about the fixed cost? Well, go to either of those two, high or low. If I go to the high one, we know that the total cost is 2400 we now know how much of that is the total variable cost included in the 2400 must be a variable cost of 420 units at two dollars each which is 840. Well if 840 of the total is the variable cost the remainder must be the fixed cost the fixed cost must be 0, 6, 5, 1560 per month. Now I said when we did this before, uh, in the exam, speed is of the essence. And so be confident in yourself. However, <coughs> I am sorry, <coughs> my throat, um, we can check it easily enough. If we look at the low one, Oops. The lower one, there are 300 units. So the variable cost is 300 at $2 a unit is 600. The fixed cost per month, we worked out at 1560. And so that would give a total cost of 2160. And does it work? Yes, it does. The low was 2160. But as I said a minute ago, <clears throat> don't waste time checking in the exam. Be confident. Uh, we've got the variable, we've got the fixed. And although it doesn't ask for it here, we could write down a little equation, could we not? That for any month, the total cost will be equal to 1560, the fixed cost, plus uh, $2 per unit, so um, 2 times the number of units, uh, that is the variable cost. No problem. Okay, so it's a nice easy approach. However, uh, there are problems with it. Um, in that, firstly, we've only looked at the extremes. Which could make it distorted. Let me explain what I mean. You see, if we drew a, a little graph showing um, the total cost against the number of units, in a perfect world, we'd have a line like this. If you remember, uh, we've always got the fixed cost uh, and in addition, the variable cost. Now again, in a perfect world, it, everything would lie perfectly on a line. In fact, in the real world, although you would expect it to be more or less linear, in the real world, things aren't perfect. They may be a bit higher, they may be a bit lower, something like that. 
And all we've done is taken the lowest and the highest. And you see, they could be unusually high or unusually low, but we've effectively found a line like this, joining the, the lowest with the highest. Now, of course, had I put them all on a, a graph like that and drawn the line that most nearly goes through all of them, well, it's not going to be the same. All we've done is taken the top and the bottom, and I say again, it, it could be distorted. If things were working perfectly and everything lay exactly on a line, no problem. But in the real world, it's not going to be precisely linear. So that's one problem. Uh, another problem is that we have assumed it's basically linear. It could be, if I did put them all on a graph, it could be that in fact it looks something like this. Um, a curve. And yet we just hit the highest and the lowest, join them up. We've assumed it's linear and it may not be. Uh, a third problem <clears throat> is even assuming it's linear, we can only really use it for forecasting within the range. You see, just because it's basically linear here doesn't mean that in the future it may sort of go like that or something. And so it's dangerous. to forecast outside the range. Again, it may be reasonably linear, and so if we're trying to forecast uh, for somewhere between, what was it, uh, 3 420 units, maybe it will give us a reasonably good uh, approximation. But we certainly couldn't say, ah, if it was a thousand units, it's still going to be two dollars a unit variable plus fixed cost of fifteen sixty. Other things could be, could affect it. And so it's a nice, simple, quick, easy approach, but uh, at best it is very approximate. Which is why there's potentially a much better approach, which we'll look at in the next next lecture, called regression. But I'll keep that separate. Make sure you are happy with high-low. You're certainly going to get one or two high-low questions, and this should be easy marks. Uh, regression, you'll see, is a little bit more complicated.